This rolls up an enemy split after the water change pretty quickly. Hey, what's up, Reverse? I am alive. I feel a lot better now that we got a routine set down with my son, Leo. I mean, my son, Leon. I keep mixing it up, man. This is bad. Anyways, today is all about tank maintenance. A lot of big items I need to address today because I have not really touched this tank in the last two to three months. Yeah, it's just been on autopilot and it deserves better. Today, we're gonna treat her better. All right, first thing first, we're gonna address the Caroline LG on the glass. It's kind of hard to see. I think it's about two weeks. Uh, every two weeks or so, I will not be able to stand how dirty your glass is and I'll try to clean it. And I always, always, always use my flipper. Uh, before the flipper, I have the Mac floats. And I thought, what's the big deal? You know, they're all the same. But nope, huge, huge difference. I'm a stubborn guy, but I was convinced. Uh, I thought it was all hype, but the flipper magnetic scraper is awesome. So we're gonna do this real quick and then we're gonna move on to the next step. By the way, I apologize for the color today. Um, I could not find the orange filter anywhere and I don't wanna go out and buy a new one uh, for my point of shoot camera because I feel like once I get it, it's gonna show up again in a week. That's always how things happen, right? When you wanna find something, it's never there, but when you stop looking, it just shows up to spite you. That's just how life is, eh? Later. Okay guys, this part of the video is gonna be a little bit controversial, but this has been working for me uh, up to this point, but I may change it up a little bit. So I'm about to clean my power head. So you know there are a lot of Caroline algae growth and it's gonna slow things down and eventually equipment is gonna break down. Um, so once in a while, I do uh, scrub them down and then soak them in 50% white vinegar and 50% water. And in terms of water, whenever I remember, I'll try to use some uh, hot water. Uh, mix 50-50 and then I'll disassemble the pump and I'm gonna soak them in there. But I also give them good scrubbing. So let me show you what I do and I'm really curious what you do as well. Because recently I came over a threat in terms of uh, how vinegar is actually really damaging to certain pumps, only certain ones. Because they're saying that the vinegar actually penetrates certain type of plastic and actually cause the magnet to swell. You may have some issue with cracked housing and stuff like that down the road because of this. This is one observation from a really well done write up. I'm not 100% sure if it's true or not. I'm gonna look a little bit more into it. So for now, I'm gonna keep up with my regimen of 50% vinegar, 50% water, scrub it clean and like to soak it for a little bit as I do water change. Oh man, I can smell it. I kind of like the smell, it's kind of weird. Things we need to clean today in terms of equipment. Uh, MP10 wet side, look at this. It's all crusted up. Let me just bring it out. And there's a reason why people call me the inappropriate reefer. Look at this. I should have cleaned this a long time ago. Uh, I want to make sure I address all the bubble algae they are impeding the flow. Uh, for the most part, okay, they don't really bother things too much, but when you get stuff like this, it kind of messes with the flow. If this did not convince you that I'm the inappropriate reefer, this probably will. Man, this is like a dumpster fire happening right here. Look at this. This is the Gyri 130, but for whatever reason, Bubba Algae really likes to grow on these black plastic right here. And um, look at this. It's definitely affecting the flow. Let me see if I can take this off in one hand. Okay, I'm gonna keep one hand on the magnets. Oh, there we go. It's gonna be so nice. All right, so let me just put it right there. Take this magnet off. I'm gonna keep it here for now. I just, my God, look at that. Jeez, two, three months worth of growth. Right there. So this is pretty gnarly, but we, I'm about to introduce you guys to an awesome tool that's about to blow your mind. This is like the best aquarium tool ever, and that is a fork, a plastic fork. Now they have a white version and black version. I've always used a white one, but I want to try the black one to see if it performs any better. <laughs> okay, let's go. So the reason I like this is because like there's two sides, right? I can easily use them to scrape off bubble algae, just like so. And I'm just kind of dumping it into the hot vinegar bath, because why not? Ooh, this is satisfying. It's a lot along the rim. For some reason, bubble algae just seems to really be attracted to these black plastic. So I'm gonna open this guy up. Been a while. There we go, open it up. Okay, now I pull my other tool, wire brush. Uh, I use this to address green star polyp growth my drop off tank and I've been using this to clean equipment since and it does really well. Also it does really well scraping off green stop polyps. So in the thread that talked about using the avoiding using vinegar. One thing they really warn about is not putting this portion 
into the uh, vinegar bath. But you know what, I've been doing it. Uh, I'm just gonna do it quickly. I'm not gonna soak it long term. So hopefully that is okay. You can see, you can see the magnet spinning inside here. All right, well, we're gonna drop this off. I'll drop this guy off. Okay, taking the gyri and cleaning this really scares me because uh, many times recently it refused to start up until I really, really just like uh, assembled, reassembled it. Um, but seeing how badly it's encrusted with bubble algae, look at all these, man. This is my algae scrubber. So again, I'm just trying to clear out all the bubble algae. This is satisfying. And I always like to scrape down because Dude, you don't want to scrape these things into your eyes and mouth because it talks so much. And the reason I really like the fork is because it can really reach all these little hard to reach holes like right here. And just kind of push things out. And you know, in some ways I actually like the bubble algae because honestly, they're a nutrient export for your tank. All right guys, so we're gonna let the equipment soak for a little bit, maybe um, maybe an hour or so or two hours. I know you're supposed to let it soak for like four hours or five, but after hearing about the possibility of vinegar penetrating the plastic and causing the magnet to bloat, I don't want to take my chance. Uh, just gonna let it soak for a little bit while I finish doing water change. Oh my God, the baby's crying. We're gonna see what's going on. Two hours later. Okay, so I just finished pulling out maybe a quarter of the refugium, the macroalgae in the refugium. In the past, I would do a lot more, but I realized that every time I pull out too much, I just throw off the balance of the entire tank. So I try not to go as aggressive this time. And right now I'm just kind of cleaning the intake of the refugium pump because all the macro gets stuck on there and re re restrict the flow. And I wanna make sure I have a good flow here, number one for uh, nutrient export, because macro is kind of polishing the water. And number two, I'm running carbon now in this little um, innovative marine desktop media reactor, in case it's actually chemical warfare among corals up here, it's causing a lot of issues. I wanna make sure I have some fresh carbon on hand, and it seems like a lot of reefers are actually doing it without, <laughs> without telling a lot of people that they're doing that. So that's one little thing that I picked up. As you can see, the reason I pull out macroalgae before I do a water change is, look at this. Look at how cloudy the display tank got. Because um, the macroalgae is holding, into, holding onto a lot of detritus, right? And as soon as I disturb them, it just releases into the water column. And that's why I want to do this before the water change. Um, so when I pull the water out, I make sure I get some of the detritus out as well. Take this out into the deck first to see how much we got. This is actually quite heavy. Oh, look at that. Mm. Oh shit, almost dropped my camera. Hi, baby. Hi, mommy. Oh, it's pooping. Okay. There you go. Leon pooping on camera for the first time. Not the first time. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Now we're on to the main event, which is the actual water change. We're finally getting an actual water change. Uh, my tool of trade is just a really simple siphon. Uh, nothing fancy. Maybe I'll go to something a little bit fancier once I get to the 150, but for this tank, this is more than enough. What I do is stick one side back here. Make sure I clear out all the air bubble. And shoot, can I do this? I'm just gonna do this one-handed. I've drank a lot of salt water and you don't want to get salt water in the system. Um, so basically I just take one gulp and go. I kind of got a sense of uh, how much air I should go. Can you hold this real quick, just one hand? What do you think? Just, just, I, just, I was just, about just, to ask just, you to hold just, him. Just, just, just one hand, we'll take turn, we'll take turn. Okay, okay, ready? Just stand right here. I can't see anything. Just, just, I can't oh, see anything. Oh, you can see. Okay, stand right on this side. Okay, ready? Damn, he's torturing One, me. All right, we're good. All right, what do you need help with? Holding him. Hold him for me. <laughs> I'll trade you. <laughs> Wait, he has to okay. be. Okay, <laughs> just put in the ground. Just make sure it doesn't overflow. <laughs> How's this? Oh no, baby. I can't, my hand is dirty. Baby, my hand is dirty, I can't touch you. One eternity later. Guys, the bubble tip, <laughs> it's just way deeper than I thought. Encrusted with bubble algae. All right, I need to find some kind of solution pronto because on the other side of the rock that we're not seeing is there's also a bunch of bubble algae. 
so it goes way deeper. I may have to start introducing emerald crab again or some kind of fish I intro this. I used vibrance before with good experience, but chemical is kind of like my last ditch effort, so we'll see. Really doing a deep cleaning on all the stuff in terms of boba algae, and I was just cleaning the overflow, and I look back there. Oh my God, man, it's like an epidemic. Just look at the back. I'm not sure how I can... Oh. Here's a small handful right there. Let's drop it. But again, I feel like this is kind of like nutrient exports. So besides them being a little unsighty, they don't really hurt much. But I would like to get rid of them if possible. And I'm seeing these kind of red turf algae as well. I need some kind of fish that eats this for reals. I know my tank is too small for a tank. Oh, what's that thing in the middle? It's weird. If you guys have any suggestions on alternatives, what kind of fish I can keep here that can keep um, bubble algae at bay, um, please let me know. All right, folks, we had a home stretch. Final step, I got enough water out, about three or four buckets full. I lost track, man. And now I'm just getting a reading of what the tank parameter is, 1.025 and then 78. Okay, cool. So I got some fresh water. I've been using these kind of blue source container. It's, I love it. Versus those like five gallon round drug. It takes up a lot of room. This just like stack a lot easier. So I used the jerry cans, fill it with fresh water, and then we're gonna add some Fritz salts. So a lot of people ask me what kind of salts I use. I use Fritz. Uh, the parameter is really close to what I aim for. So that is good. And I think like every type of salts have their own bad review at some point. Um, Fritz is no exceptions. However, they've been working out well for me. So, while I still have them, I do use them. I use the Fritz Blue Box. If you're a little bit more appropriate than me, you may have everything measured out. For example, a bucket full of water equals uh, like maybe how many cup of uh, salts. I do not. Usually I just kind of dump it in and measure and go that route. One thing I really like is actually the HANA salinity tester. This is one of the things that really makes um, takes a guesswork out of salinity checking. I used to use a um, hydrometer. It actually served me pretty well because it is, it is actually pretty accurate for hydrometer. But ever since I got the salinity tester, I just kind of rely on this instead. Now in terms of water change, usually you want to heat up water and then add salt in there because the salinity is going to change based on the water temperature. So everything's all tied together. So I'm going to plug in a heater and heat things up. One hour later. Oh guys, look at this. The large anemone that filled up the entire tank is shrunk down to that. How crazy is that? Look at that. Okay, so we filled it up. We're gonna add some water back into the tank. Long day. We're checking back with the power heads that are soaking. We took a wild brush and easily brush out most of the Carolina algae and as well as the, the rest of the turf algae. Um, the gyre is a little bit harder to clean because there's so many grids and uh, so many different moving parts. And I'm still nervous about putting it back together and making sure it restarts. So now I'm just kind of rinsing them off. By the way, this wire brush is awesome. Shout out, wire brush. All right guys, so here's my fear realized. Look at the gyre, see how slow it's spinning? So sometimes I see, I get this going on. After I plug the, after I clean it, put, plug the power back in. So in cases like this, something may be jammed up, something may be too tight. I'm gonna mess up it a little bit and see if it comes back. Um, Ah, this sucks. Three days later. Hey, what's up, Brief First? It's been a few days since the big water change. I did maybe like 20, 25%. I just wanna show you how the tank looks today. The tank looks a lot cleaner, right? And there seems to be a lot more negative space. Now, one really interesting thing is that beyond the usual where the corals are really happy with the water change, the rose bubbled up an enemy. They were really angry and they shrunk up for about two to three days. It's only like today they started really opening back up. This tells me something. That means like the either the water parameter changed drastically or the flow has changed drastically. So I've done some water testing two days ago and all the water parameter is as usual. 
So everything is stable because I'm using fridge salts and the parameter is really close to what I'm chasing after. So everything seems okay. So that leads me to flow. The flow change was enough to really, really pissed off the rolls bubble to put at me. Now let me show you the pump. You remember the pump was all kind of jammed up with bubble algae. So that side is pretty much all plugged up. Now it's no longer plugged. So we now got flow pushing the enemy towards a rock. And they were all really angry for about two to three days. It's after two, three days, they started getting acclimated to the new flow again and started expanding again. But they for sure are still adjusting. Remember a while back, we visited my friend's rose of enemy tanks. Uh, one question we have is that, why do they split so much? They pointed out that every time after a big water change, they split, probably due to the drastic change in the environment. Well, look at this. We got a baby. So this rose split from an enemy split after the water change pretty quickly. I think like the second day, it's already like splitting. Uh, so now, instead of five, we got six rose split from an enemy. Who knows, once they come out, maybe there's more. And this is only due to the adjustment of flow, I think, because like the water parameter really didn't change much at all. But if I get some more rose from an enemy, that'd be awesome because I really want this rock to be covered by RBTA and I want them to be like, kind of like flat against a rock so I can still keep out the corals around the parameters. However, this is not ideal. Uh, whether it's due to the water change or whether it's due to the change in flow, uh, the fact that the split means that the environment changed drastically in, in their mind. Um, so I guess there's a lesson here. There's a lesson here. Well, it's kind of like, it's kind of a strange lesson. The lesson is that I should do my maintenance more frequently so it's not such a drastic change for all the tank um, inhabitants. The rose bubble tip anemone is the only inhabitant I can see that's visibly distressed. But in this case, distress actually worked out in my favor because they split. However, there could be other corals that I'm not seeing that's also distressed by the big change in water flow and possibly water parameters. So the lesson here is that I should keep up with tank maintenance and not do such like a drastic change every like two to three months. Now, to be fair, I usually do water change maybe like once a month. This is a special case where I went two to three months without water change. So I gotta get back into my regular routine. With the tank maintenance out of the way, the next thing I wanna address in this tank is dosing. Currently, I'm dosing Biao as two parts. For the most part, it is sufficient. But after running the ATI ICP test, I realized that there are actually quite a few elements that's uh, pretty low in the system. So instead of trying to dose all those missing elements, I'm thinking about switching to a system that has those naturally. For example, I'm looking at the ATI Essential Pro system to dose instead of the BLS two parts. And I may also supplement it with Kalkwasser just to raise the pH a little bit. Recently, I watched the Magna talk by Lou about uh, reef tank chemistry and it really opened my mind. Now I understand that do not chase number, right? But this tank is kind of like my sandbox before I fill up the 150. The 150 is on the way. So I really want to nail all these downs so I can transfer all these techniques to the 150. So this is kind of like my sandbox. So with that in mind, most likely I'll set it up with ATI Central Pro um, and also Calpwasser just experiment and see if that does any better than the two-part solution that I've been using. It's gonna be exciting, and I'll be sure to bring you guys along. So, that said, I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12.30 p.m. shop. Later. All right, guys, I gotta grab the camera and record. It is actually Saturday, bright and, more, bright and early, it's 3 a.m. I'm here taking care of the kid, and the aquarium light just kicked on. And I had to show you guys this. Right now it's 3 a.m. The light just kicked on. That's why I can get a closer look when the anemone is not really opened up yet. Uh, and I was doing count. We got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Instead of six, we have now have seven. Uh, I think the split is here. I think this probably split it again. That is weird, man. The big one still looks big. So it's probably this one that split once and then the split split again. The three in the back is holding steady. I know there have always been three. Uh, two of them, the oral disc was kind of fused together, but it looks like they finished their splitting. Whew, this is wild. If I can figure out exactly what it is that caused these rose split of an enemy to split, then essentially we'll almost have like unlimited rose split of an enemy, which is awesome. And these are all natural split. Maybe I'll do some testing down the road, especially since all the other corals doesn't seem that bothered. Huh. All right, just wanna share this quick bit. Let me pop this in and re-render this a bit.
guys, look who this is. Hi! Apparently she's still keeping Reef Tank. Oh my goodness. Anyways, today we're gonna address like all these frog spawn.